in this video, I want to show you what I think is quite transformational and quite amazing to see how far things have come so quickly around what you can do with AI and data analytics. Now, what I've got in the background here is I've got some work I did within advanced data analysis, which is an open AI plugin tool for ChatGPT 4. Okay. So it's a paid subscription, but I wanted to really see its capabilities. I did a live stream last week on this and I wanted to see, okay, if I just gave it some new data that I hadn't really seen before, how far could we get? And look, I was blown away. I was really blown away and I want to walk through it with you. We've got this on high speed. So this is actually three times speed um, of well, how long it actually took me. But overall, I think I did this analysis for an hour. I recorded myself for an hour and started from scratch, just from absolutely nothing and built up to some, some really compelling analysis. Now, what we're looking at here is really just what advanced data analysis does or ADA. Sometimes I refer to it as ADA. I think it's just easier. It's not the best name to be honest, but you'll see here that if you look through a lot of the, a lot of the output here, it's just giving us a really good understanding of all of the analysis. It's giving us a real deep dive. Now I referred back to the, to the raw data, uh, like quite, quite a bit, just, just to obviously just a sense check because it was um, churning out so much information, but also just to become familiar uh, with the data a, a lot more so that I could ask the right questions. I could write the right, I could ask the right prompts, even though this is just really good at telling you what it thinks you should um, analyze. As you can see here, like this is a telecommunications data set and I was, um, you know, wanting to analyze churn, usage patterns, revenue analytics, you know, all, all of these great things, right? And then we're coming up with this from, from, from nothing. I mean, I, I, I wasn't even prompting it. I was just asking, asking the system, can you tell me what you think I should, um, I should learn and what I, I should uh, prompt here. Right. And you see here, here, how much information was coming out. It was, it was quite, quite phenomenal. Really. It was giving me details about uh, all the details about the customer, right? So the, 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 the data set we were using had a lot of details about each individual customer. Um, did we have their email? How many day minutes, evening minutes, night minutes, international minutes, day calls, charges, so on and so forth. It had a lot of that data, right? And it was able to really read it. It was, it was, it was comprehending it. Um, it also saw, we could also see a breakdown by region. Um, also, uh, we had other, other categories or other segments as well. What I'm like really amazed with, with, with ADA is the speed, the speed of exploration that we can do. Maybe it is still not the, the greatest end product. Like the visualizations still aren't that amazing. And also, you know, there's a lot of text in between visuals. So it's never going to surpass at this point, you know, a dashboard, right? Like a really solid power BI or Excel or Tableau dashboard, but it is incredible for exploration. I don't think I've used a tool that is better than this ever for just exploring data uh, and getting to the bottom of what is a good insight and what and what we should focus on from a um, analysis point of view, right? You see here what happened above was, um, in this one was that it didn't actually plot the, the spatial information correctly. So I had to redo it and understand why it didn't work, but also, you know, um, try and get the best uh, Python library in there to be actually to actually run it, and it played around a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't; it's just not perfect, right? It just uh, it doesn't it doesn't work as you'd expect. But you can eventually get there, right? It's just uh, you you can eventually get there. One of the one of the findings I'm I'm sort of getting to with this is that this is a great tool to use before you go and actually launch into any analysis, right? I think it. It just really gets you working in the right direction. You know, because with analysis, so much is about discovery. It's so much about it, you're feeling your way through the data and trying to find like, where is the interesting insight? And the speed in which you can get to that point and get underlying factors um, that you can focus on is I think incredibly valuable. You know, one of the most high value things I think um, you can add to your analytics workflow. It's also very, very good 
at things that I would say are quite hard to do in traditional tools. Like you see here, these are this is the statistical analysis. So we're building a histogram. These things are quite hard, like like I know for a fact, like they're very hard to do in Excel. They're quite hard to visualize inside of tools like Power BI. You have to do a lot of quite advanced um, and uh, modeling and also DAX formulas to actually get that correct, right? Like doing any sort of segmentation is slightly, it is, it is advanced work in, in a lot of these tools. And so you see here that it, it sort of just churns this out using Python code in, inside of here automatically very easily. And that is, I think, you know, part of the reason why I think it's just so helpful in this exploratory stage uh, where you're trying to understand a lot more about the data. So you see here that was giving me a, a good uh, um, distribution of uh, calls, call volumes. And here we're looking at um, information about our states, what were the top states, what were the bottom states for average revenue per user. So even even calculations like that can sometimes take take a little while. And so we can have a lot of, we can be given a lot of direction into what we can find. Then we were diving into the international plan, call patterns, email plans. And I love the descriptions and the recommendations. So the description here is, is let, do you want to dive deeper into usage patterns? And yes, and that makes a lot of sense, right? So let's have a look at usage patterns in high revenue versus low revenue states, plan subscriptions in high revenue versus low revenue relationships between. Okay, so just the creativity there, I think is second to none, right? The ability to be a creative analytical sidekick, like, it's hard. That was that is hard to come by. That is truly hard. Has has always been hard to come by. Being able to do, be able to be an absolute guru at doing all of this, you, it's, it's quite hard. It's quite hard. It takes a lot of mental energy, a lot of expertise, and um, I even find myself like when I was rolling through this analysis, I was just so impressed. I was so impressed by how much it helped me, how much it helped me in terms of what I did post this point, right? And it was so quick, like imagine being able to just get everything set up for yourself by investing an hour of time with these sort of tools. Now, I've, I've mentioned this on past um, past videos as well, is that it's not immediately ready for prime time right now. Okay, so when I'm, when I, what, I, what I mean by that is this, there is no guarantee on security of your data at this point. There is, there is a JTPT enterprise coming out very soon, which I think will solve that, but it's not readily, you know, it's not, not widely available just yet. And also sometimes, sometimes it can't be completely relied upon. You can have the odd, odd issue. You can have the odd error, right? And so that you just have to be really aware of that you've got to use critical thinking you can't you can't just prompt and just expect everything to be perfect right look i've i've never met an analyst who gets everything perfect as well you know um so i don't i don't think you can discount it so much because of that but you just have to be aware right it's not it's not this all answering oracle that's just going to get everything uh, right for you from from the word go you need to be very um, mindful and very critical in, in your thinking and evaluation of what it's given you. Use it for all, all its positive points um, rather than rather than focusing on the negative. So here, here's, an, here's an interesting example as well. Like the visualizations it gives you are not always that great. And so in this case, I had to ask, can you make the visualization better by removing the legend and um, differentiating on colors or or labeling or better labeling? Still not perfect, but still you know pretty good, right? Pretty good to be able to create that off from from scratch. And this is quite a, yeah, that was quite a unique insight, like international calls versus regular calls. Like it's quite, quite a bit involved in that. Okay. So here we're getting um, a little bit more technical. We're saying, is there any correlation? And it does a um, uh, relatively advanced statistical uh, piece of analysis and says that there is a weak correlation or a slight negative correlation between the two variables. You know, one of the other things that I've recently realized and, it, and I, recommend trialing this out is the ability you, did you know that that this can create csv files for you it can actually create csv files on your existing data so if you wanted to you put in a much larger data set and you said and you wanted it cleaned up you could ask it to like i just did here like i got a summary 
right? I got a summary data set in a CSV file of all of the states. Now, and then I was able to do analysis in Excel very quickly from that, right? And so this is, I, I, again, a, a unique way and, and follows on from a, um, my past video on, on, on our YouTube channel, it, the Enterprise DNA YouTube channel, is that using all these things in combination is where the power comes, right? Very quickly, very quickly, we were able to get a summary of our, of our raw data set and I didn't need to use Power Query for this. I just put it into um, ADA. I put it into advanced data analysis, right? Using Python, some prompts, it, it gave me the summary that I wanted. Creating the summary this way, I will have to tell you, is probably easier than creating it in, say, something like Power Query, right? Just being able to prompt your way to this, I would say, is probably easier. And then you can visual get this into visualizations however you see fit, and then you, know, you can put it back into put it into PowerPoint or, or present it just with an image, you know, very, very quickly, or just ha hand the, the spreadsheet around to someone else. So I was, I was, uh, you know, I was excited to sort of see that in action. And the other thing I was going to say is that, did you know, you can create data sets on anything, absolutely anything through this tool. Just try it out. Go in there and ask it, create me a data set on banking data, create me a data set on sports data, create me a, a, a data set on logistics information. It will it will randomize it however you like. It's it's mind-blowingly good. Mind blowing. So as you can see here, I just kept diving, diving deeper. And look, I'm telling you right now that if I was to do this from scratch myself to find all of these insights and I was using a tool like Power BI, you know, to do it, which I think, you know, is the only tool you could really use to find all of these insights. I mean, you could use Excel for some of them, but to find all of the in-depth ones here, you probably would want to go to Power BI. I think it would legitimately take me six to eight times longer to f just to do, just to do this sort of exploration of the data, right? Now that is kind of amazing. Like you've got to think that that is a productivity game changer for someone who is um, a data professional, right? And it's just the, it's not only just productivity on what you could do, it's the, it's the, it is the creativity. It is the creativity around the analysis you can do as well. Like I've never considered myself a real statistical expert or uh, someone who uh, can run algorithms, you know, Python algorithms, machine learning algorithms, but I'm empowered by the suggestions that ADA gives here and then the work it does in behind the scenes to then showcase to you what's possible. You can then translate that into your own tools. And I totally intend to in um, future work that I do is moving it from within this environment to a really comprehensive, say, Power BI report or, or a, a report in some other tool where we're maybe um, more suited to collaboration that you um, that you work uh, you know co collaboration around your data activities right like so power bi is an incredible tool for that uh, it's got all of the um, in incredible like enterprise ready features uh, that so you know this doesn't sort of take away from that all i'm saying is that i think it really supports it really supports what you're doing in other tools so see here i was just doing some multivariate analysis and special cases to identify potential anomalies. Basically, I was doing some anomaly detection. Now, I think that the, the data here was quite, it was it was kind of random. It was a it was a sort of demo data set that we created a while ago. So there wasn't a huge amount of anomalies. There wasn't a huge amount of outliers, but I'm convinced that it would have found them. There was, right? The depth here, the depth, like you must, after watching through this and, and listening, listening to me talk about it, the depth in which you can go right is is quite amazing, isn't it? Like we've been, I mean, I know this is sped up, but the detail that we're going into, I just love it. I really love it. So you see here that we're opening up some Python packages, Seaborn, didn't didn't work um, perfectly the right uh, at the same time. One, one, of the, one of the other insights that I found um, actually, which I think you'll find interesting, is that having a solid Python understanding i think is becoming crucial like i really do i i didn't really give it that much time over the years because i just didn't feel the need i felt like i 
was getting everything that I that I needed out of just you know Power BI DAX so on and so forth, right? But here I'm realizing that understanding how Python works is a is a killer strategy. Like it's a killer add on to your um, skill set. I don't think you need to know how to code. I really don't. I think that these tools like ChatGPT and, and ADA here that they they're gonna be able to write out code so easily. And, and also describe code, but at least you want to know how it runs, how it works, how the overall architecture of Python works. That's what I've been really getting a lot of value out of because these tools are just using, you know, Python, right? Like this, this, this is writing out Python based on its natural understanding of language and the data that we're giving it, right? I was having a bit of trouble here for a while. So see, sometimes it just, you know, it just doesn't work as you'd expect, but you can eventually get to the, to the answer, right? So see here, I was just doing a bit of statistical analysis. See, some of these visuals, like they, they, they were, traditionally they can be quite hard. You see here, and it, and it, get, it gives you a detail around, around the inside, right? As you see, a not churned, churned, I was able to get a lot of information around it. Now, because the data set was a bit random, we had some, some outliers in this particular result. But it was helpful, right? It, it gave me a lot of good direction. If, if there was anomalies, if there was outliers, I would have been able to really detect that fast and I, was, I would be able to sort of focus in on that uh, within my analysis. It'd be so inter interesting to see where this technology lands, right? Like, I really enjoy, actually, like the times that I've been using this tool, it's, it's so new, but I enjoy I enjoy using it. I really do. I really enjoy the the immense discovery that can be done in such a short space of time. See here, look at this. Revenue insights, usage patterns, customer distribution, duration of service. You see here that I was able to just get like a full rundown, right? I asked it, can you can you give me an overview of the data set and your key insights? And it, and it just churned it out so quickly like that, right? Ah, I discovered that it got something really wrong. And I said, why did you get it so wrong? It says, apologize. It's always very apologetic, by the way. <laughs> and I don't think it really impacted the analysis so much, but for some reason on a particular answer, it got it kind of you know, very wrong. But I was able to pick it up. Like I used my critical judgment, my critical thinking on it. And I said, you know, why? Why is it? Try to dig, dig a bit deeper. Um, and then that would give me an opportunity to go back and like really analyze, um, analyze why as well. Okay, you know what I also did? I I asked, I asked it for your. I asked, can you give me some um, examples of what we could do with this in these insights? But also overlay that with your knowledge about the telecommunications industry, and it gave me all of these ideas. So incredible there, also. Anyway, I'm going to round off here. I really enjoyed this one, and uh, thanks for joining me on this.